You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued today Law 11 of 2019 approving the General State Budget 2019-2020 after its approval by the Shura and Representative Councils. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia today to head the Bahraini delegation participating in the Emergency Gulf Cooperation Council and Arab Leaders Summit and the 14th Islamic Summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation held in Mecca in response to the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Majesty was received at King Abdul Aziz International Airport by the advisor of the custodian of the two holy mosques, Governor of Mecca, His Royal Prince Khalid Al Faisal bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council, Dr. Abdul Latif Zayani, Bahrain's ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Ahmoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Saudi Arabia's ambassador to Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Sheikh. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King then gave the following statement. His Majesty expressed thanks to the custodian of the two holy mosques for the invitation to participate along with Gulf Cooperation Council and Arab leaders in the Gulf and Arab Emergency Summits and the Islamic Summit. His Majesty noted that holding these summits reflect the wise leadership of the Saudi monarch and the leading role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in protecting national security and developing joint Arab action leading joint Islamic action and his contribution to strengthen Arab and Islamic unity to deal with all issues and overcome current challenges that threaten the region's security and stability. His Majesty expressed confidence that these summits will be a new and powerful stage of cooperation, solidarity and integration at the Arab and Islamic levels to achieve the aspirations of the people and in accordance with the region's country's potentials and resources to become the most advanced countries. His Majesty the King wished the summit success in achieving the desired goals. Earlier, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa had departed Bahrain to head to Saudi Arabia to chair Bahrain's delegation to the Emergency Gulf Cooperation Council and Arab Leaders Summits and the 14th session of the Islamic Summit Conference hosted by Mecca in response to the invitation he received from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Majesty was bid farewell at the Sakhir Air Base by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, stated that the spirit of affinity and affection that prevailed throughout the holy month of Ramadan reflected the strong ties that bind the people of Bahrain. His Royal Highness said that the atmosphere that prevailed during the holy month of Ramadan has continued positively to the promotion of values of brotherhood within society. His Royal Highness expressed sincere congratulations to the people of Bahrain and residents on the occasion of the upcoming Eid al Fitr, wishing the Arab and Islamic nations further prosperity and blessings and many happy returns. His Royal Highness went on to confirm that His Majesty. King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has succeeded in employing an overall successful system that included all aspects necessary to preserve the country and its capabilities and to continue the efforts of development and modernization. He noted that the government is continuing its efforts to implement many development programs that will positively affect the citizens' life and ensure progress in various areas. He said that citizen satisfaction is the indicator of the success of any service or developmental program. His Rohan has stressed that the citizen is the main criterion in determining priorities and 
and arranging the schedule of government programs. He added that Bahrain is moving towards the achievement of further development and building on the achievements made at various levels. His Rohan has stressed his keenness on fulfilling the needs of citizens through direct meetings with them. He pointed out that all efforts of the government are focused on developing various services and providing them with the highest quality standards. His Rohan has stressed that building the future is a challenge that concerns everyone in order to promote development of the country and to achieve the welfare of citizens and future generations. He said that the determination of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King will not dissuade it from achieving all that is good for the country and citizens. His Rohan has said that the people of Bahrain through successive generations of men and women have been and will continue to have a large impact on Bahrain's progress. His Rohan has expressed pride in the consciousness and enlightenment of the people of Bahrain praising the pivotal role played by the men of the press and media in the march of national action and their contributions to the enlightenment of society. He called in this regard for a rapid and constructive response to all that is published in the press. His Rohan has called on everyone to work together and complete the comprehensive development process taking place in the kingdom and to maintain and and build on the achievements accomplished in various fields. On the three Gulf Arab and Islamic summits called for by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud in Mecca, His Rohan as the Prime Minister affirmed that these summits came to reflect the deep wisdom and interest of the custodian of the two holy mosques in consolidating stability and to continue the efforts of building and development for the benefit of Arab and Islamic people. He expressed optimism about the success of these summits and achieving their goals and deepening Arab and Islamic solidarity thanks to the wise management of the custodian of the two holy mosques. His Rohan has said that cooperation between the Arab and Islamic countries preserves the nation's integrity and increases its strength and stability. He praised the pioneering leadership role played by Saudi Arabia to strengthen the bonds of joint Arab action, stressing that supporting Saudi Arabia in various circumstances is a national duty for the security and stability of the region and warding off risks. His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, met with the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, the Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning Minister, Islam bin Abdullah Khalaf, the Youth and Sports Affairs Minister, Ayman Tawfiq Al Mu'ayyad, and the Ministry of Housing Undersecretary, Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser reviewed a project that aims to establish 100 football fields in Bahrain in order to provide a suitable environment for the youth and to support national clubs and football teams. His Highness affirmed that the initiative of establishing 100 football fields has become a necessity due to the youth's growing interest in sports. His Highness noted that new ideas will be presented, all of which are in the interest of reviving sports activities in Bahrain in an organized manner using developed sporting facilities capable of embracing the youth and developing their creative energies, which is the implementation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He noted that based on the initiatives of the National Program for the Development of the Youth and Sports Sector, a new initiative has been launched for the establishment of 100 football fields in Bahrain through the exploitation of available spaces. His Highness noted that he directed the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs to contact the relevant authorities to implement the initiative, as well as forming a working team of the ministry members to work on the implementation of the project. He stated that the football field has been a major center for producing many distinguished players in various sports, noting that this initiative is an integrated plan and a clear vision for its continued development as a proper environment for sports talent, which provides Bahraini clubs with emerging talents. He highlighted that these fields will play a large role in the maintenance of youth and filing or rather filling their free time. It will also carry a social dimension and strengthen the relations among youth. His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed the importance of cooperation and teamwork between the public sector and private sector and civil society to ensure the success of the project. The National Information Committee held a meeting today chaired by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al-Mtawa, at the Royal Court of His Royal the Prime Minister, where they reviewed the topics on the agenda and the presence of the members of the committee. At the beginning of the meeting, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs expressed thanks and appreciation to all committee members for their efforts. He also thanked all ministries and government agencies for their constructive cooperation with the committee in providing documented information that reflects the progress made by the Kingdom in sustainable development fields, as well as providing the concerned international organizations with updated information for adopting them, reports and indicators for monitoring various aspects of development in the kingdom. al Mutawa stressed that the government, led by His Royal the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa, included the committee in its interests in continuous follow-up, which contributed in achieving its objectives. He noted that Bahrain has a distinguished record in the development of national indicators, stressing the need for ministries and various government agencies to provide national indicators in various sectors. During the meeting, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for International Affairs, Dr. 
Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa presented the periodic report on the working team concerned with regional and international reports and indicators. The Survey and Land Registration Bureau, the SLRB, General Director of Survey, Naji Sept, presented a joint memorandum between the SLRB and the Information and E-Government Authority on the use of geographic information systems to provide indicators of sustainable development. The Interior Minister, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired today the meeting of the Civil Defense Council in the presence of the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Minister of Oil, Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Minister of Health, Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Ministry of Information Affairs, Chief of Public Security and the CEO of the Supreme Council for Environment. The Interior Minister welcomed the members, stating that the meeting is aimed at reviewing all plans and procedures to protect general safety and discuss related topics. He asserted the importance of evaluating readiness to ensure the public safety of citizens and residents. He added that the current regional situations and challenges require fulfilling specific procedures to address them. He ordered to continue updating national strategies to deal with emergencies and set plans and proactive scenarios as part of efforts to protect citizens and secure establishments. He noted the launching of awareness programs to educate people on how to react while facing possible situations to ensure the implementation of the required protection and safety steps in the desired manners. The meeting reviewed emergency cases and extraordinary Ordinary situations, including the allocation of shelters in all parts of Bahrain. The Chief of Public Security was assigned to find suggested sheltering locations and set their specifications. The meeting also discussed the required preparations for crises and disasters. The General Directorate of Civil Defense was assigned to provide gas masks meeting the approved specifications and determined accredited suppliers. The meeting also discussed necessary preparations, including the operation of sirens. The Council briefed the meeting on the efforts of the National Disaster Management Committee and topics discussed in its recent extraordinary meeting. The Interior Minister expressed thanks and appreciation for the members of the for their dedication and cooperation in coordinating and enhancing the safety and security of the public. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, has participated in the preparatory meeting of the Council of Foreign Ministers for the 14th session of the Islamic Summit Conference held under the title Mecca Summit, Hand in the Future, Hand in Hand for the Future in Jeddah. The meeting discussed the issues on the Islamic Summit's agenda to be held on Friday in Mecca and the draft resolution presented to the summit on the Palestinian issue. The foreign ministers also discussed the final statement that will be issued at the end of the summit and which will address all issues of concern to the Islamic countries, the most important of which is strengthening cooperation to meet the various challenges, combating violence, extremism and terrorism, as well as other political, economic and development issues. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and member of the Council of Ministers of Saudi Arabia, Adil bin Ahmed Al Jabeer, on the sidelines of their participation in the preparatory meeting of the Council of Foreign Ministers for the 14th session of the Islamic Summit Conference. The meeting was part of the continuous consultation and close coordination between the two countries. They discussed the issues on the agenda of the Islamic Summit Conference, exchanged views on Arab regional and international matters, and emphasized continuing coordination on all issues in the pursuit of the two countries' consistent consistent approach and efforts to enhance security and stability in the region and the world. Sheikh Khalid also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Thailand, Don Prama Diwani, and expressed Bahrain's pride and friendly relations with Thailand. He also noted the keenness of the two countries on developing coordination in various regional and international issues, in addition to strengthening all aspects of cooperation in order to support their interests. He hailed the friendly relations between Bahrain and Thailand, which reflects a common will to promote them to reach higher levels in all fields, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, Retno Marsudi. Sheikh Khalid underlined the deep friendship between the two countries and which is witnessing progress and prosperity on all levels, expressing the aspirations of the kingdom to strengthen bilateral cooperation and developing coordination in various forms to serve the interests of the two countries and their friendly people. Marsudi noted the advances in the relations between the two countries that meet their aspirations, wishing Bahrain for the progress and prosperity. The government of Bahrain today announced that the state budget 2019-2020 has been passed into law, demonstrating that the kingdom is committed to realizing the aims of the fiscal balance program and paving the way for strong growth and further fiscal consolidation. Updated forecasts included within the budget demonstrate the government's deficit reduction program is well ahead of schedule with a primary budget surplus forecast for 2020. The state budget law, which was passed by Bahrain's elected chamber of parliament, will ensure the kingdom continues to pursue responsible fiscal policy while safeguarding economic growth, job creation, 
administration and the delivery of essential services for citizens. The kingdom's path of fiscal consolidation supported by strong infrastructure spending has been positively recognized by international bodies and credit rating agencies. With growth gradually strengthening across the region, Bahrain has benefited from increased positive spillovers in areas such as tourism and trade. Favorable regional liquidity markets are boosting the availability of capital, positively affecting Bahrain's on-share index. Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa stated that the 2019-2020 state budget clearly demonstrates that Bahrain is prioritizing sound fiscal and economic policies while safeguarding the continued prosperity of citizens. He hailed the cooperation of Parliament, which continues to play a valuable role in efforts to deliver a strong, sustainable economy. The minister added that the deficit is down by over a third, and early indicators show robust GDP growth in the first part of the year, putting the kingdom well on track to deliver a balanced budget in line with the fiscal balance plan 2018-2022. The delegation of the participating countries in the Mecca summit begin to arrive in Jeddah in response to the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabra Sabah, arrived to participate in the three summits. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi also arrived to participate in the Emergency Arab and Islamic Summit. A delegation from Morocco also arrived to attend the Arab and Islamic Summits, and a delegation from Oman arrives to participate in the three summits. Earlier, both the Senegalese President and the Algerian Prime Minister arrived in Jeddah. May 30th marks the day that the two emergency summits called on by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman ibn Abdulaziz Al Saud, convene. In preparation, flags of Arab League, Saudi Arabia and other participating countries have been placed along several routes in the Mecca venue. Heavy security is in place at several vital points and in the vicinity of the location. A state-of-the-art media center has also been set up for the utmost proficiency of media collaboration and access in order to have all necessary tools to communicate the agenda and the summit's results transparently to the public who is keenly awaiting this regional power meeting. A giant screen has been installed to telecast live the proceedings of the summit from the venue. A large number of media persons from across the world will be covering the event. It is important to mention that the summit holds paramount importance in the wake of recent attacks that have targeted civilian areas and Muslim holy sites in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as well as the cowardice attack on ships in the territorial waters of the United Arab Emirates and the Iran-backed Houthi militia's drone attacks on two oil pumping stations in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, all of which have serious implications for regional and international peace and security and for the supply and stability of world oil markets. The meetings will be held in conjunction with the upcoming Islamic Summit. According to the statement of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia, Ibrahim Abdul Aziz Al Assaf, King Salman has sent an invitation to the leaders of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries and leaders of other Arab countries. The United States has also deployed an aircraft carrier and bombers to the Gulf over alleged threats from Iran. The kingdom's regional allies welcome the Saudi invitation. The current critical circumstances require a unified Arab and Gulf stance. The meetings will be a significant opportunity for these countries of the region to achieve their aspirations for establishing peace and stability. For Bahrain International News Desk, this is Sarah Lebrek. The Emergency Gulf and Arab Summits are due to be held this evening and the 14th Islamic Summit for the Organization of Islamic Cooperation will be held tomorrow. The summits will discuss Iranian threats and security tensions in the Gulf after attacks on four ships and tankers in the UAE waters and the attacks on Saudi Arabia by the Houthi militia. We'll also focus on the peace process and Arab issues and crises.